don't know, technology is difficult. So if Chris wants to join me, we have some fun things to talk about today. Um, like June is Pride Month. So we um, here at the WCA um, are, sorry. Okay, we're good. Sorry. So it is LGBTQIA plus Pride Month. It is also Men's Health Month. And then it is also Immigrant Heritage Month. So we are just going to talk a little bit all about that. Um, Chris, is there anything that you'd like to add? I hope that people can hear us. Uh, I didn't see anybody pop on, so uh, <laughs> I can use the your phone. I yes, it's Monday. It is absolutely a Monday here. Um, <laughs> we were gonna, um, we were actually gonna do this uh, uh, live lunch on Monday um, on the front steps because we wanted to talk about accessibility, um, but we wanted to also be conscientious of clients we have coming in because confidentiality and um, security and safety is also a number one. Uh, concern always and we have our crisis center located in this building at 720 West Washington and so this is a safe place but we want to talk about accessibility for those folks uh, that you just mentioned and those populations right because we do provide services for members of the LGBTQIA community and we do provide services for men or those who identify as men um, and those who women because we know primarily um, those who are impacted by domestic abuse tend to be women they're um, tend to be but it doesn't matter. We, we actually don't, um, a lot of times you call our hotline, we're not gonna ask your gender unless you identify um, what your gender expression is. We know that domestic abuse, sexual assault, happen to everyone. Uh, they happen to everyone. That, that for These particular uh, uh, pandemics, uh, we are experiencing a pandemic within a pandemic, is what unfortunately we have been talking a lot about in the last almost year and a half now. Um, there are a lot of people who've experienced uh, significant levels of domestic abuse, sexual assault, child abuse, as people have spent more and more time at home, uh, schools and uh, uh, churches and things like that have been shuttered. And so we know, we know that there are members in this beautiful community. It's an absolutely gorgeous day out here. It is so nice. It is so nice. So, but we know that there's a lot of people who've experienced, uh, well, beyond depression and things like that, um, there's some really terrible things happening behind closed doors. And so, we want to talk about that. We want to talk about people who are in those different communities that have significant barriers to receiving help, to even speaking out, to having their stories be accepted, um, the stigmas associated to that. So we, um, we want everyone to know that you'll be accepted here. And if you don't feel comfortable, we want you to call and let us know and we'll do everything within our power to help make sure that you do feel accepted and that you get uh, the right services. And it, even if it's not us, we can help find the right referrals. And we have everything, um, we try to provide cohesive, we don't say everything, but we provide cohesive services. So we are more than just a domestic violence shelter, which is not here, by the way, it's at a secure offsite location, but we have counseling. Yeah, yeah. Case management. I think that, so I was talking to our CEO B last week when we were filming our B line, and I think that's a really good point. And she talks a lot about meeting clients where they're at. I think that's really, really important. Um, not one person's journey is going to be the same as another, yeah, and we all right. have different needs. And I think that's really important, especially when we think about the stigma that um, male identifying survivors have with coming forward and um, getting the help that they need. And same with LGBTQIA community as well. I think that's just very nice to know that that we like to meet clients where they are at and where they and when they are ready for their healing journey. So you may be concerned about someone, or you may be concerned about or wondering um, just about something that's going on in your own relationship, or you may be trying to uh, perhaps uh, deal with or recover or kind of come to terms with something that's happened in your past. And guess what? You can call our hotline and perhaps come in and talk to somebody about some of those things and, and try to you know figure out maybe um, finding a better solution or just coming to terms with some things. That's completely okay. Those are some things that there's people here that can that can help you find some solutions and find some tools. That's all. That's all things that happen inside these doors. Um, I have stood out in front here. I've, I've been with the WCA now um, over eight years, and I've stood out on these front steps and talked to people who, tell, who share. Um, really happy journeys, happy stories of journeys of where they've, they have um, found some peace um, by talking with people about things that happened when they were children. 
Um, and to me, those are really awesome stories to hear because it may not be something you're dealing with right now. It may be something you're dealing with right now or, or experiencing. I don't want to say deal. That's that's always, not always the right term, but um, something you're experiencing right now. And um, you do want to find out what resources might be available for when you make that decision to make a choice. Um, and you can find out that too. You don't have to be ready to make any big decisions. Just make that call, 208-345-7025, 343 <laughs> Why is it that I always question that phone number when I'm on live? It's, I, I think every, every single person when we do live at lunch, like, okay, and the 24 hour hotline is, uh, uh. 208 <laughs> 7025. I probably said that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I've typed it out even more often, but yeah. that is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can actually call from anywhere, anytime to ask questions, to get referrals. Um, we have crisis case managers who are very trained. They can do um, some safety planning with you. They can talk through things. They can give you resources. You can make an appointment to come in and talk about things. And that is the entree into all of our services, whether that is safe shelter, if that's your need, or case management or financial empowerment programming, which is a fantastic program. Um, so write down that number, give it a call. But again, today we're talking about, it's also Immigrant um, Heritage Month. And we know that there are many, many um, community members here and, and worldwide, nationally, who are who face significant barriers to receiving services, and whether that be cultural or language or um, many other reasons, but we know. Again, we know there are a lot of people in our community who have been significantly more impacted recently, but we also know there are a lot of people just in life, in, throughout their lifetime, who face uh, more domestic abuse and more sexual assault than those experiences than you want to think about. And the numbers are staggering. And I guarantee if you're watching this and you're listening to me, you know somebody. You do know somebody. And these are things people just don't like to talk about. And I, I want to encourage you to think about that because that's how we change that, is by talking about it. And you don't have to get into the nitty gritty. I'm not talking about going off, you know, and getting in the ugly stuff, but talking about it because it does happen. And that's how we break that cycle. That's how we change our communities. We start talking about it. And we start calling out behaviors, we start saying, how can I make that change? How can I how can I help create that change? Becca, what do you think are some things that anybody watching this might be able to do just to eat today and tomorrow? So I think there's a lot that you can do relative to what we have out. So on our social media platforms, we have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, um, YouTube. So we have lots of different opportunities about education presentations, or even you could listen to our brand new podcasts. We have two. We have the Prevention Perspective, which is um, more of our prevention program by our amazing program, um, our prevention program manager, Tracy. Um, and then we have our um, What Compassion Accomplishes podcast, which Chris and I co-host with Corey. Hi. <laughs> Corey from Auction Frogs. Um, and we just talk about pretty much whatever is on our minds, um, we have some really exciting guests coming up this next month. We're recording on Friday. Um, we have possibly our first survivor story. Um, we'll be talking with someone who's heavily involved with the LGBTQ community. Um, what else? We just have a lot going on with our podcast. So I, I think that you could check it out. Um, it's all over our social media. It's on our website. So sometimes helping create change is as simple as a click, a like, a share, making a comment, or learning something. You pick up a fact and you, you call out when you hear somebody that maybe is dismissing something or you say, you know, actually, let's talk about that. Or you are, if you're concerned about somebody and it, and it trips something you know, and you, you know, make a call, uh, knock on a door, go by it and check on somebody. So there's lots of little things you can do, but even as simple as a like, a share, a comment on a social media post. But I want to encourage you, if you're worried about somebody or you haven't heard from somebody for a while, or it's somebody you know and you've known for a while and their behavior has changed, um, reach out. Don't shy away from that because it is all of our concern. It's our community and it's our business. And uh, it doesn't mean you have to do, make some grand gesture and intervene completely, but you know, checking in on people and uh, letting, starting that conversation. Yeah. Letting, the, letting them know that you are there for them, even if you aren't sure what's happening it's I think it's nice to just 
let them know I'm here, I'm available to talk. Um, you know, Becca, I haven't seen you lately, which is a lie, actually, I see her a lot, and I really love her, but if I say, <laughs> Becca, I haven't seen you for a while, I just wanted to check in with you, make sure everything's okay, um, and if Becca says, oh, I'm fine, you know, I really can't talk to you right now, that's, you know what, that's fine, but hey, maybe I'll pop by next week, maybe we can grab coffee, and if she says the same thing next week, maybe I'll pop by next week, you want to go for a walk? Okay, you know, hey, if you ever want to just talk, or you need, you know, I'm going to Costco. Maybe I know she hates Costco. <laughs> can I pick you up any? I know you love those protein drinks. Can I pick you up some and drop them by? Oh, yeah. Um, Small I know, things. You know, yeah, whatever. Just pick up. Uh, make, keep making those offers, making those efforts, because eventually, if someone is in a relationship that perhaps is unhealthy, there's some red flags, they may decide to take you up on that when the time is right. So if there is something going on and you're worried, just keep, keep extending those little offers. Um, because you never know when somebody may make that, may decide that the time is right for them. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of variables with our with our brothers, sisters, friends, loved ones, neighbors, uh, cashiers at the grocery store, people who work in the library, gas stations, who are members of those communities with increased barriers uh, to getting help, and that's a lot for us to understand. And that's on us to try to understand and educate ourselves. So as it's June, it's Pride Month, it's uh, Men's Health Month, it's Immigrant Heritage Month. I would encourage you to- Elder abuse. Um, el it's an Elder Abuse Day next week. We'll be posting some things about that. Elder abuse is domestic abuse, just as child abuse is. So I encourage you to educate yourself and try to just take bite-sized pieces because real change doesn't happen overnight. And uh, it's on us to educate ourselves and, you know, try to do one little thing each day or week as much as you can. There's been a lot of big things happening in our world in the last year or two. And sometimes it can feel very overwhelming, especially for older people like me. <laughs> or middle-aged or whatever you want to say. <laughs> Golden years-ish almost. I don't know what I am. Anyway. Not uh, <laughs> <years. Chris. laughs> Anyway. Sometimes change comes easy for some people and sometimes it doesn't, that's all I'm saying. And I would I would implore that you don't shut it off and shut it out because that's how we can create change and, and work toward the vision of the WCA, which is a community where all individuals thrive in safe and healthy relationships. And at the end of the day, who doesn't want that, right? Yeah. Safe and healthy relationships for everyone, all individuals. Yeah. And we can, everyone, everyone can do something to encourage that, whether that is the kids in your, you know, your nieces and nephews and your godchildren and your your grandchildren's classrooms on their soccer teams and their karate classes, or just people walking down the street. We live in a great community. We saw that just a little bit, you know, everybody walking yeah. by and waving. You know, there are other places in the in our country and in the world where that doesn't happen, but here in this city of trees, people make eye contact and they wave, and that's awesome. I love it here. Yeah. But yeah, we do have a great community. So we're coming to you live, live at lunch, like we try to do every week, and we have been for over a year. I'm and answer uh, for questions. We will keep coming to you live at lunch, and we we like you to shout out if you have something you'd like us to talk about. We're going to be looking to um, try to incorporate different topics with our outreach. We're excited to get out and about again. Um, we can come to you to your place of business. Um, you can also look at our digital toolkit. We've got our educational presentations online there to play, but we can bring our tabling um, as the world is opening up a little bit. Uh, I am fully vaccinated. I am as well. So we are safe. Um, we can bring our shoe cards to you. We can help educate and offer um, information about WCA services and also about the dynamics of what um, domestic abuse is, sexual assault, how you can help support people you're worried about. Um, our prevention team is working to reach um, some more than rural communities and in schools and, and collaborate with other programs. So we would love to come um, collaborate with you and talk about how we can um, collectively make our communities yes. healthier. So thanks for joining us for Live at Lunch on